Right, hello there everyone, welcome back to Change Redman TV and welcome to another video! This is the first day that I've posted twice in a row in years, years. But James is back, I'm back to talk to you about Bruno Amorim. It's Ruben Amorim. Oh, I'm not even going to restart the video, but I keep calling him Bruno. Right, let's talk about uh, Ruben Amorim. Right, okay, so a lot of people are going to be like, well, he's not Jurgen Klopp, oh, he's in the Portuguese. Shut up, shut up, honestly, just stop moaning. He Here's my opinion on uh, Ruben Amarim. I'm going to give you a little breakdown on the type of manager that he is and what he can bring to this team. And is he good enough, really, to replace Jürgen Klopp? That is such a big spot to fill. And, and, and the same way that Paisley did replace Shankly, but never truly replaced Shankly, it was one of those where, like, Shankly is still Shankly. And then Paisley is still Paisley, but the legends in their own way. It wasn't like... We, we, I, I don't think people would say Paisley was better than Shankly. I think people would say Shankly built the foundations, Paisley continued and elevated the success. For me, Jürgen Klopp was the Shankly. Can Amarim be the Paisley? Can he take Liverpool to that executive next step where we are winning trophies season in, season out? Now, at Sport and Lisbon, he joined there four seasons ago. When he did... He joined after being at Braga. So he was the reserve team manager at Braga. He then got the first team manager role at Braga after a couple of months impressing with the reserves. He won, the, I think it was like nine out of ten games. He beat teams like Porto and Benfica. And bear in mind, Sport and Lisbon hadn't won a league title in Portugal at this point for 19 years. 19 years without a league title. So his transformation when he got bought... Triggered by a release clause for £10 million. When he got bought by Sport and Lisbon, leaving Braga, he joins them. I believe he won a trophy in his first season. In his second season, he won the league. And it was a very impressive fashion. It was like when... Do you remember when we lost to Man City 4-0 and we got bummed? It was like that. Like, they'd won the league already. It was confirmed with multiple games to go. They lost the one game after they'd won the league and they then never lost for the rest of the season. So that season they won the league losing just one game, which means he's able to motivate the players to keep on going, even if the job's already done, so to speak. Also, Sport and Lisbon did knock out Arsenal last season out of the Europa League. Bear in mind, Arsenal was still a very good team last year. It wasn't like the eighth place Arteta sides. This was actually a really decent Arsenal side. Probably in some ways better than this season. But this season, they've solidified that back line that little bit more. Speaking of the back line, he's a very, very good defensive manager. Likes the approach of the 3 5 2 or the, th the th mainly three at the back, two wing backs, dash midfielders, two centre mids, and then a front three. And you tend to see him rotate throughout the game. Um, and, and the thing that I like about Amarim as well is that he seems to be a bit more well-rounded. You know, in terms of he's a good coach. He's a good man-manager. He's young. He's only 39 years of age. And when you consider the spot, the, the spot that Liverpool, or the era that Liverpool are going into, they're going into an era with Sober Slight under 25. McAllister, he mustn't be much over 25. Trent Alexander-Arnold, I think he's bang on 25. Nunes, again, 24-25. And then just to rattle off a few other players, Kanate, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott. Now, whether you want to question these guys are good enough or not good enough isn't the topic of the video. The topic of the video is that with this new project, without, without the experienced players, you know, the Bobby Firmino's, the Sadio Mane's, and then you consider the players like Mohamed Salah, who you never know when he's going to go. It could be the end of this season. It could be next year. Either way, Amarim has got a very exciting project on his hands. And if it, he's, I think he's somebody who will most certainly embraced this job with both hands. He's took on every single challenge that he was given in Portugal. And we know Liverpool... Uh, listen, I hated the shouts of Jose Mourinho and, and, and Nagelsmann. Nagelsmann probably wouldn't have been hating that idea, but it wasn't my number one choice. Jose Mourinho was a horrible choice. Anyone who recommended Jose Mourinho would definitely smoke and crack. Cocaine! Cocaina! But, thankfully, they're not the managers we're going to get. The only other one that I probably would have considered... In terms of a, in terms of a, you know, smooth transition of Klopp to this manager would have been Hansi Flick because even though he underwhelmed on an international level, he's most certainly overwhelmed when it came to his club level at Bayern Munich. But then you've got to remember that is Bayern Munich. He had an, an amazing team, so he's not going to get that at Liverpool. It's a very different project. We have got great players, 
But you can't say we've, we, we, you know, we've got the best team in the league and the best depth and the best finances like the way Bayern Munich did have um, when he was there. So Hansi Flick, I feel like, would have been actually a more rougher transition, whereas Amarim is most certainly a long-term manager, which I always believe is the way to go. I don't believe in a model of constantly sacking managers, at least not for us. If you're Chelsea, you're basically used to that model by now. For Liverpool, I just don't see... How we love to connect with the manager. We love to build a relationship with them. And also with our resources, which aren't Chelsea's resources. You need a specific type of dude to come in. Someone who can identify young talent. Someone who promotes the youth. Amarim stands on these responsibilities. And he's just being offered a three-year deal by the club. That'll be in the title. But that's the breaking news. A three-year deal. Finances are being sorted out. And that is actually looking likely to be complete because Amarim, he's shown a lot of interest in the job. And you know what? Yeah, I would much prefer an Amarim who is keen on taking the Liverpool job with the experience that he has and the great job he's done at Sporting than a Shabby Alonso. And listen, the likelihood is Shabby Alonso becomes an elite world-class manager, probably in the brackets of Zidane at Real Madrid, where he won a Champions League three years in a row, or Carlo Ancelotti. You know, a serial winner who will only be attracted by the likes of the Bayern Munichs and the Real Madrids. Possibly one day Liverpool, if it goes wrong at any of those clubs. But I feel like him coming out and saying that he wanted to spend another year at Bayer Leverkusen was very smart for me because we could have easily... If, if, if Jürgen Klopp announced he wanted to leave Liverpool the season that Gerrard was undefeated with Rangers, I best believe, and you best believe, Steven Gerrard probably would have been the number one candidate in a lot of people's eyes. Oh, he's undefeated with Rangers in the league. He's smashing it, blah de blah de blah And that was right. Steven Gerrard's done great with Rangers. And yes, Scotland is different to um, the German league. But I don't just look at the quality of the league of how good a manager is. I look at a league is a league. And, and for Gerrard to win the league with Rangers in Scotland for that long that they hadn't won it, and oh, I think they stopped Celtic from doing 10 in a row huge, um, that would have been a very attractive op option at the time, the same way Xabi Alonso is now, and I think we're all predicting, like, oh, he's going to go to Real Madrid and all this, and that is the likelihood, but for right here, right now, I want someone who's ready, who's up for the job, and I think Amarim is most certainly up for the job as well. So, just to break it down, got a good pre pedigree in Portugal, loves to promote the youth, has the second, I believe, in terms of shots faced this season, Amarim's sport in Lisbon has got the least shots faced besides Arsenal. So Arsenal, number one, and then it's sport in Lisbon. Sport in Lisbon have the defence on the level of the likes of Inter and Arsenal. And granted, again, fair enough, you know, he's, 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 he's in that league and stuff like that. But overall, let's call a spade a spade, mate. He's, he's shown some impressive signs. He's a good tactician. And he seems to be a good motivator. And there's a huge possibility... He's going to connect with the fans. I don't see this guy like a Pochettino who, you know, when he was at Tottenham and Southampton, he developed good young players. I feel like he's somebody with proper passion and someone who's going to connect with the fans. So I'm excited by this. Um, nobody is going to be Jürgen Klopp Hardy. But can he be Ruben Amarim? Yes. And if I've called him Bruno multiple times in this video, I apologise. Um, I just think of Portugal, Bruno, it's annoying. Uh, but yeah, that's my assessment on uh, Amarim. I like him. I think he'll be a good coach. With the solidity of the backroom staff as well, in terms of like Michael Edwards, the sporting directors that he's appointing, um, I'm liking the direction of the football club. And I'm hopeful. Because United fans keep saying to me, like, oh, when we let go of Sir Alex, it just went downhill. It's very different circumstances. You know, Sir Alex Ferguson appointed Manchester United's next manager, David Moyes. And who allowed Sir Alex that power was the Glazers. We have Michael Edwards, who was wanted by Real Madrid and all these. They're not just going to let Amarim walk in and just dictate the club how he wants. He, Amarim's going to need to earn that the same way Jürgen did. Jürgen, over time, got more power. That was why Michael Edwards weren't too keen. But now with Michael Edwards, Amarim, there's going to be an established relationship there. And I'm sure over time, if he proves himself... Michael Edwards will give him more power. And I don't see this being an Arsene Wenger after Arsenal. I don't see this being a Sir Alex after United. I'm not saying we're going to go and win loads of league titles. But I'm a confident Amarine can come in and get us top four and maybe a trophy. Yeah, he's established himself as a cup manager as well as a, um, as a league winning manager. Even if it is in Portugal. Still a good league, still good comp competition. It, it, it might not be elite of the elite. But again, no league titles in 19 years. That changed when Amarine came to the club. 
It's four years of consistently good managing, whereas Shabby Alonso's only had one. Gerard only had one as well. That's why I'm happy with Amarim. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I wanted to do this video on Amarim because this is a big piece of news for the football club. And I will see you all later. Sayonara, peeps.